Welcome to the Straight Board Connection with Tommy. This video is on your Monday Night Raw results, superstar spoilers, birthdays, deaths, and other wrestling news. Well, happy birthday goes to Gorilla Monsoon, belated birthday. Well, of course, he passed away years ago. Uh, he was born on June, June the 4th. Mikey Riprap, also born on June the 4th. June the 6th, Ahmed Johnson, Drew McIntyre, and Conan. Also, ODB. Uh, Muhammad Ali died on this past Friday. WWE issued the, the statement on the boxing legend Muhammad Ali on Friday. WWE is saddened to learn that the three-time world heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali passed away at the age of 74 on June 3, 2016. The Louisville native won six Kentucky Golden Glove championships and the gold medal for the U.S. United States as a light heavyweight in Rome in 1960 at the Summer Olympics before beginning his pro career. Ali also made history for his historic boxer versus wrestler match against WWE Hall of Famer Antonio Inuki in Tokyo on June 26, 1976. The fight is regarded as a precursor to modern mixed martial arts. In 1985, Ali made his mark in WWE history when he was one of the special guest referees for the main event of the first WrestleMania at Madison Square Garden. The bout featured WWE Champion Hulk Hogan and pop, and pop cultural icon Mr. T against Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff, and Roddy Roddy Piper. During the contest, Ali climbed up onto the ring apron and took a swing at Piper. WWE extends its condolences to Ali's family, friends and fans, as, as well as I do myself. WWE has uh, confirmed that Randy Orton will be appearing on new USA Network thriller Shooter soon. Uh, they announced that the following Randy Orton's next move may feel to some like it's coming out of nowhere, such as his RKO. Uh, that's because USA Network announced Friday the Viper will join its upcoming thriller Shooter in a guest starring role. Orton's involvement with the upcoming series arose earlier in the day thanks to a tweet by Shooter star Ryan Phillip Felipe and I'll also post a picture of him and Orton together for you on set with a superstar Randy Orton showing him the ropes Felipe said in a tweet Orton will play the role of James Richards a former Navy SEAL and leader of a militia group who comes into contact with Felipe's character <coughs> And the cast also features Omar Epps, Chantel Van Santen, Cynthia O'Day Robinson. The series is based on the best selling novel, Point of Impact, by Stephen Hunter, and a 2007 film adaptation starring Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg joins the Emmy Award winner Stephen Levinson, Levinson as executive producers on Shooter. And it will uh, be. Begin on July 19th on the USA Network. Look get this. By that time, also, SmackDown will be on that same channel. So, I know what time slot SmackDown versus uh, with the shooter. Obviously, you can't re ran at the same time. An interview with Sports Illustrated with Damian Sandow after his re. Release revealed uh, who actually told him that he was getting released from WWE. Here are the highlights on a feature in wrestling. By no means I am I going to burn my boots. WWE taught me to uh, the performance element and what I would put into characters in WWE is similar to what I, what you would do in TV or on a TV show. Uh, I've been working with an acting coach for almost a year now, and I'm really digging the idea of playing different characters. The WWE was great. It was awesome. And that will always be part of who I am as a performer. But again, I'm also focused on the future. On getting the release, call from Mark Serrano. I don't think uh, he, he, he enjoyed doing it. I felt bad for him. And I was saying, I have other things lined up. I'll be okay. I knew him well and still think highly of him. That's business. Not everything in life is a bowl of cherries. On being content with the WWE run, as a performer, I will always be grateful to the fans 
The fans made me. All I did was go out there and put everything I had into it. And the fans made up their own minds. But there are other guys who need to be given a chance. All I can control is fan response. And the fans made up their minds very organically. That was based on, on my body of work over the years. I look at the WWE and professional wrestling as a, a lot of different than most people. If it's an ongoing TV show, what more could I have done as a character? I have accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. In an entertainment business, we aspire to entertain people. We entertain by our performances. There is an absolutely an athletic element to the WWE and the performance in the WWE. But I look back at my career and feel the spectrum of emotions I have extracted from the audience in a fairly short time. I can say it was a job well done, and now it's time to move on to the next thing. Brock Lesnar will be have will have to be medically cleared by the New York State Athletics Athletic Commission after his UFC 200 event in order to compete at SummerSlam. The New York Stock, uh, the New York, the NYSAC's Laz Benitez issued a statement to Live Audio Wrestling confirming that Lesnar will need to be cleared after he faces Mark Hunt in order to participate in the August pay-per-view, which takes place in Brooklyn. The statement reads, Potential participation by Mr. Lesnar in an August WWE event would depend on his medical fitness and physical condition at the time of a professional wrestling show. No person is allowed to participate in a pro professional wrestling exhibition in New York State until he or she is cleared as medically fit to do so by a New York State licensed physician. Brock Lesnar was interviewed by Paul Heyman in a one-on-one -on -one setting regarding his return at UFC 200. Uh, Lesnar said he would hire coaches and training partners. Then said, we're getting geared up already. Lesnar and Heyman both played up to the idea that this is the first time that, he, that a healthy Lesnar will fight in UFC due to his issues with diverticulitis. And you can watch the, the uh, interview at HamerHustle.com or at this link. As noted, Brock Lesnar will return to UFC to fight at UFC 200 on July 9th in Las Vegas. WWE confirmed the fight, calling it a one-off, and added that he is still scheduled for SummerSlam in August. No word yet on who his opponent will be, but Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that the opponent will likely be announced Monday night on ESPN. The deal for Lesnar to return to the UFC was just recently finalized, but apparently discussions have been going on as Lesnar reportedly started training for the fight in April. Rumors started a week ago at the UFC website, added Lesnar back to their web active fighter roster, but quickly removed him. Dana White was asked about Lesnar returning at weigh-ins on Friday, but he said there was nothing to the rumors. There are a lot of questions surrounding Lesnar's UFC return and what WWE might get in return. Stay tuned for more updates uh, through this uh, uh, through this week. I've seen no more. On a related note, the CM Punk fight will also be happening this summer. Meltzer noted that Fox Sports 1 has the reality series on Punk and opponent Mickey Gall scheduled for August, which indicates Punk's debut would come in late August or September. Lesnar also spoke about fighting at the age of 38. His desire to return to the Octagon, reaching out to Dana White for the fight, his training team, and more. This is the first part of the interview. Later in the week was part two. But this uh, hasn't been advertised for when it actually comes out. NXT wrestler Elias Sampson, a.k.a. Logan Shulo, suffered a fractured left ankle during a live event on uh, Friday night in Nashville, Tennessee. The match had to be stopped due to the injury, and Elias was helped to the back. Unable to bear weight on the ankle, WWE ringside physician Dr. Chris Aman told WWE.com Elias will be put in a cast and crutches, but is expected to make a full recovery. Correspondent that was there also there at the event uh, posted uh, more, uh, news on the injury on ProWrestling.net. Uh, he noted that the injury occurred that Samson performed Stun gun when he suffered the injury. The next thing we saw was the referee throw up the X sign. 
Zero. Uh, Elias hit the mat in frustration and was then helped to the back to a standing ovation. He couldn't put weight on his left leg. TMZ reports that Rusev and Lana will still have two weddings this year. This, is, uh, this was indicated during an interview last year, but now plans are confirmed. One wedding will take place in Malibu on the, on the beach in July. Of course, that's Lana's choice. And the other will take place in Bulgaria. Uh, that's where Rusev's from. In September at 1,000-year-old monastery, the wedding in Malibu will be packed with celebrities and a total divas cast. Lana's two bridesmaids will be actresses uh, Kelly Jackal and Brittany Stowe. Regarding the wedding in Bulgaria, Rusev felt it was important to get married in front of family. Enzo Amore was in the studios this past week, apparently working on new music. As you can see uh, him on his Instagram account, on that link, WWE Network has uh, started adding AWA Super Shows to the WWE Network On Demand section. They currently have AWA, AWA Super Sunday from April 24th, 1983. AWA Wrestle Rock from 1986, from April 20th, 1986, and AWA Super Class 3 from December 13th, 1988. Uh, and here's a uh, cryptic tweet picture sent in by Bray Wyatt at uh, WWE Bray Wyatt on Twitter. Uh, this is a house in New Orleans they call the compound. It's been in the ruin of many a poor boy. And God, I know I'm one. Booker T announced that his reality wrestling pro promotion will be working against Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore group on August the 6th in Houston. The event will benefit a local autism charity. Booker makes the announcement in this video on Instagram. <coughs> and also on the link there. You can go to it directly. Uh, Booker T. Is it Instagram.com backslash uh, Booker T. 5x and the link. Uh, superstars, what you've all been waiting for. Sin Cara defeated Victor. Zack Ryder and Dolph Ziggler defeated the Dudley Boys. And we get Raw. We go live into the arena to see Dean Ambrose making his way to the ring. In the ring, you got Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Chris Jericho, Alberto Del Rio, Kevin Owens. All standing on ladders. Well, sitting on ladders. Kevin Owens opens up first and goes on to talk about how he, how the other five men will make history as one, as the ones to lose to him when he grabs the money in a briefcase. Owens will then give matches to anyone, not the guys in the ring, like Waylon Mercy or the Four Horsemen. Uh, Sami Zayn then criticizes him and says he'll take on all comers if he can cash in on the opportunity the briefcase affords. Uh... He'll offer a match to anyone in the ring or in the back. He'll pay it forward. Dean Ambrose says they've established their established their differences. Ambrose says he'll fight anyone, even polar bears and or aliens. <coughs> Ambrose wa wants to get get to fighting. Alberto Del Rio tells them to shut up. They keep talking about him being champion, but Owens and Zayn say they never have been one. Compared compared to them, they're just dogs. Covered in fleas. Uh, they're just paper boys. Cesaro goes to start talking, but Chris Jericho cuts him off. Jericho says he'll throw him into the audience with the rest of the Cesaro section. Jericho says he created the match and is an expert in it. Cesaro asks why he never won one. Jericho says he has won one, but he stumbles when trying to identify where he won it and when. Jericho says it was in his stupid idiot vilt. Which starts a stupid idiot chant. Cesaro says that must have been his hometown. But Jericho responds by saying, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot. Jericho says, being in the match with him, one of the greatest of the generation, puts them at a different level. Jericho closes his eyes and lets them drink in the gift of Jericho. They all get off their ladders when Jericho is, is doing this. Ambrose climbs Jericho's ladder and punches him off. Owens and Zane go at it on the floor as Cesaro attacks Jericho. Ambrose and Del Rio also brawl. It leads to Teddy Long's music hitting. And the former GM of SmackDown makes his way to the stage. Long talks about SmackDown going live and stumbles over, saying it's one of the longest-running shows like he did last year in a well-known blooper. 
Long says he would take all of them and make a disqualification match and starts going crazy with the stipulation matches. Stephanie comes out and asks what the heck, what he's doing here. Long calls her baby girl. She says she is not his baby girl. Long says SmackDown is going live and he wants to run the show. She's saying they're not making that decision tonight. Long wants to talk to Shane McMahon, but she says he's on vacation. She then kicks him out with no music. Stephanie then puts the six men in singles, singles matches. Sami Zayn will take on Alberto Del Rio. Kevin Owens will take on Dean Ambrose. Cesaro will take on Chris Jericho. And then she dances to Teddy's, Teddy Long's music. Commercial break, Chris Jericho versus Cesaro. By the way, uh, she did say, when your, match, when your match is next, we joined the match already in progress for the commercial. When we're seeing Cesaro back, Got uh got back Jericho in the corner. Jericho gets in a cheap shot. Cesaro responds with the right hand. They stumble over the side headlock. Cesaro whips him off and Jericho shoulder blocks him. Jericho taunts, taunts the crowd and laughs. They lock up. Cesaro pull, rolls through and does a few kip ups before applying a side headlock. Jericho whips him off. Cesaro shoulder blocks him down. Cesaro then counters a leap frog into a chapter world backbreaker for a two count. Jericho chops the chest a few times and sends him into the ropes. Cesaro flips to the apron. Jericho with a springboard drop kick. But Cesaro uppercuts him out of the ring. Cesaro then takes him out with a somersault senton off the top. Uh, off the apron. Cesaro then sends him into the barricade and then connects with a running forearm. Uh, Cesaro puts him in the ring and goes to the top rope. Cesaro leaps. But Jericho drop kicks him out of midair for a two count. Then we get a commercial break. Back from the break we see Cesaro fighting up with a chin lock. <coughs> from a chin lock. Cesaro fights out. Jericho chops him. Cesaro then sends him into the corner, but Jericho slingshots him over. Cesaro then goes to the top rope. Jericho goes for a double axe handle, but Cesaro uppercuts him out of midair for a near fall. Cesaro goes for a Cesaro swing, but Jericho counters into an inside cradle for a near fall. Cesaro then goes for a springboard uppercut, but Jericho counter counters with a code breaker that sends him out of the ring. Jericho goes up outside to quickly grab him. Jericho deadlifts him and puts him back in the ring. Jericho picks up a near fall for that. Then uh, Jericho slaps him in the back of the head and puts him in the corner. Cesaro comes back with an uppercut and catches him with a deadlift superplex for a near fall. Cesaro runs into a boot. Jericho takes him out with a missile drop kick for a near fall. Jericho and Cesaro trade punches with Cesaro coming out on top. Cesaro then connects with a lariat before trying a neutralizer. Jericho counters into a backdrop, but Cesaro rolls through. Jericho rolls out and applies walls to Jericho. Cesaro rolls through and punches him. Cesaro then rolls into the Cesaro swing with multiple revolutions before turning it into a sharp shooter for the submission victory. <coughs> Replay show of, uh, uh, from uh, last week of uh, AJ Styles and the club attacking John Cena on Raw last week, and they'll fight at Money in the Bank. Later tonight, the New Day will take on, on the club in six-man tag action. Coming up next, uh, we'll take a look at the rivalry, rivalry between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Commercial break. WWE pays tribute to the late Muhammad Ali and shows tweets from some WWE personalities paying him tribute. A spectacular video airs talking about the feud from the point of the view of Seth Rollins. Lana introduces U.S. champion Rusev to the ring. Rusev will fight Jack Swagger next. Commercial break, Titus O'Neil. Uh, Titus O'Neil on commentary for this match. Rusev with Lana in his corner versus Jack Swagger. Rusev takes him down with a waist lock takeover. Well, I watched this match until the commercial break. Then I took myself a nap. Swagger quick, quickly fight, fights up from the waist lock. Swagger locks the punch and connects with a right hand. Rusev reverses the whip and takes him down with a spinning heel kick for a two count. Rusev stops him a few times before putting him in the corner. Rusev punches away at him in the corner before kicking him in the midsection and connecting with a running boot to the head. Rusev then applies a modified chin lock, but Swagger fights up. Rusev leads him in the midsection and puts him in the corner, but Swagger avoids the avalanche. Swagger connects with a corner clothesline and sends him into the opposite corner. Rusev elbows him in the face and hits the ropes. But Swagger power signs him for a two count. Swagger goes for the Patriot lock and locks it in. Rusev gets out. Rusev gets out of the ring to recover. Swagger gets out of the opposite side of the ring and they kill each other 
with double clotheslines on the floor. Well, Rusev makes it in by the 10 count. And Rusev wins by count out. Swagger didn't make it in. Uh, Rusev kicks Swagger as he gets in the ring. O'Neal charges the ring and hangs onto the ropes. Swagger shot blocks Rusev. O'Neal takes him out with a big boot. They do the We the People chant as Rusev looks on like he's seen a ghost. Uh, John Cena makes his way to the ring after a commercial break. Uh, replay the song of AJ Styles and the club attacking him from last week on Raw. Uh, Cena says you don't know what you have until it's gone. We had a passion, a passion and electricity last week. He and Styles were in the ring looking eye to eye. That's a moment that happens in, in, in once in a generation. Usually we have a, a rowdy Monday Night Raw crowd like this one. That's got a light response from, from this tough crowd. And sometimes we get a, we have a let's go Cena, Cena sucks chant. That kicks up. Half of them have his back. Half of them don't, don't want him back. Uh, for two and a half minutes, they had a, a, a Cena and Styles chant. Cena then gets that going. Cena says he's only had electricity like that once before with The Rock. Rock and AJ Styles had everything. Had very different career paths. But well, they didn't change that energy. A lot of people didn't think that would happen. For 15 years, people asked, what if we were finally going to get that answer? But now he needs to needs an answer to another question. Why, AJ, why? Why the hell did he take the easy way out? Now, what we have is a chance for AJ Styles to explain himself. Cena then calls him out to the ring. AJ comes out to a good reception with a, with a bullet club behind him. And yes, even uh, John Cena says Bullet Club. A loud AJ Styles chant breaks out for the crowd. They let it go a little bit. Cena says that the excitement is there. Why did he go back with the with his junkies from the Bullet Club? Styles says he had a plan. He wanted to shake his hand, look him in the eyes, and punch him right in the face. The crowd booed that. It worked to perfection. Styles said Cena, Cena insults him. Cena is great on the microphone the morning and late night shows, and movies. Well, the one he, he has cameos in, at least. Cena insults him every time he, the bell rings. Commenting on his wrestling style. Style says he knows that it burns Cena up inside to know what he can't, that he can't beat him. Styles mocks a you can't see me taunt. And uh, Styles repeats the same thing. He tells the kids when they ask why he, ha he hasn't faced Cena, it's because he would run circles around him. Cena says he can't believe Styles had 15 years to come up with the insults that he's the best, that's the best he could do. It's the same thing every other person says when they meet him face to face. Cena says his jokes are, are as outdated as his, as his jorts. Uh, Cena says he sees a man who worked two decades to try to make it and finally get a, got a surprise entrance in the Royal Rumble and did nothing. Then he uh, had a gift had he gifted an opportunity at the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and fell twice. Instead of shaking it off, he second-guessed himself. A lot of people have told him he's God's gift to sports entertainment. And he's been a, been a bust. Styles looked to the one guy that could save his arse and make him feel like he belongs. Cena says that's, that isn't phenomenal. That's desperate. Styles couldn't get past Roman Reigns and now he's trying him. Styles doesn't know who he's dealing with. Styles tells him to back it up. Styles says he's not desperate. He's been all over the world. Desperate is for people that have, have, have nowhere to go. It doesn't matter where he goes. They will welcome him back. It doesn't matter if he if it's Osaka or Tokyo, Japan. He'll sell, out, or sell them out in, in a second because that's what happens when he steps in the ring. Styles says he has nothing else to prove. Unfortunately, for Cena, he has nothing to lose. The guy in the fight with nothing to lose is the most dangerous. Cena says he knows that because he has nothing to lose every time he steps in the ring. Cena asks why it is him versus the club. Styles says everyone that knows th this place knows that if you lose to Cena, you can get the shovels out because you'll be buried. The club is there. And as an insurance policy to keep his head above the ground. 
The club goes down the ring and surrounds Cena. Cena prepares for a fight. The club puts up the click uh, signal to start to get in the ring. But they bail out when the New Day runs down. The club leaves the ring and the New, New Day stands tall with Cena. New Day will face the club later on in, uh, in the show. Commercial break, Vaughn Villa is already in the ring. Enzo Amore and Big Cass make their way to the ring. Enzo goes through a stick. Big Cass pays tribute to Muhammad Ali before Enzo talks about his concussion at the hands of them. Enzo says his jaw is strong like Ali's. Big Cass says they're the next WWE Tag Team Champions. There's only one word to describe them. And I'll spell it out for you. S-A-W-F-T. So, Vault Villains versus Enzo Moore and Big Cass. Vault Villains tag, tag in and out, taking turns attacking Enzo. Big Cass tagged, uh, tagged in and takes out Simon Gotch with an Empire elbow. But Aiden English broke up the pinfall. Enzo runs in, but, a, but English uh, big boots him down. Aiden then, English then sends Enzo into the ropes, much like the move that he gave Enzo the concussion at, at WWE Payback. Big Cass realizes what he just did. He and he viciously attacked English in the corner. The referee tried to get him back, but he can't. Officially, he then calls for the bell. He tried pushing him back like three times, and then calls for the disqualification. God try, uh, Gotch tried to uh, attack Big Cass, but Cass took him down with a big boot. Cass then laid him out with an East, East River crossing. Big Cass and Enzo Amore embrace, embracing the ring. Tom Phillips uh, called up with Sami Zayn backstage and asked, if he feels like he's the underdog in the match against Alberto Del Rio. Zayn says he, he is the underdog. Del Rio is the only one in the match that has won the Money in the Bank contract and won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. A win tonight would prove that he belongs. Alberto Del Rio walks up and says he has big dreams of winning the contract and the title. That would, be, that would make Zayn's life mean something. All those people that doubted him and laughed at him would be proven wrong. They would be right. Winning the contract is for men like him, not Zane. Zane's dreams are his reality. Del Rio says he's a dog and a paper boy before walking off. Commercial break. More tweets uh, from WWE personality that are shown honoring Muhammad Ali. A picture of Hulk Hogan and Ali uh, was prominently shown. Stephanie McMahon was backstage texting when Teddy Long walks up, listening to his theme song, Long says if, if he were running things, he'd have Enzo and Big Cat take on the Vault Villains, Gallows and Anderson, and the New Day in a fatal four-way for the Tag Team Championships. She asks how he got She asks how he got past security. Long takes out a dollar and says, the dollar dollar makes you holla holla. She asks him to leave. Uh, she then calls marketing on her cell phone and books the exact match. The long just suggested, claiming it all to herself. Next up, we got Sami Zayn versus Alberto Del Rio. Charles Robinson is your guest, is your, is your referee, official, uh, and is a f official for the match. Del Rio kicks him in big section and punches him in the corner. Del Rio sends him into ropes, but Zayn ducks a clothesline and takes him down with a head scissor takeover. Del Rio goes outside. Zayn followed. Del Rio bounces off the ap apron and sends him into a barricade, but Zayn took him out. Well, the moon's all off the barricade. Good time for a commercial break there. Then we come back for the break. We see Del Rio applying a chin lock to Zane. Zane fights up and punches out of it. Del Rio sidesteps an avalanche. But Zane comes back with an elbow and a boot to the head. Zane forces him with a cross body block for a, for a two count. Zane goes for a suplex. But Del Rio counters into a backstabber for a near fall. Zane blocks a boot to the face and rolls him up for a two count. Del Rio runs... Uh, Quickly uh, kicks him in the head for a near fall. Del Rio gets up for the cross arm breaker, but Zane fights it. Del Rio hits the ropes. Zane takes it down with a clothesline. Zane goes for a hell of a kick, but Del Rio boots him in the face. Del Rio drop, pops him up on on the top rope, but Zane fights him off. Del Rio quickly comes back with an insecurity that puts him in the tree of woe. Del Rio goes for a double stomp, but Zane drags him off. Zane sits up, but Del Rio punches him in the back of the head. Del Rio then takes him out with a Double stomp for the win. Ambrose uh, was walking backstage when, when he sees Kevin Owens laughing. Ambrose asks what he's laughing about. Owens says he's laughing at him. Ambrose shouldn't worry about 
polar bears. He should worry about him. Owen says in two weeks he's going to try to dismantle him with a ladder. However, Ambrose has seen has seemed off these past few weeks. Ambrose asked if he if he was off when he beat him for the Intercontinental Championship last year. When Owens loses the briefcase and is sulking, will he still be off? Owens says he needs help. Ambrose says, no, you need help, bro. Ambrose walks off, and Owens says he's not his bro. We'll hear from Roman Reigns on a story on his feud with Seth Rollins next. Commercial break. Another video airs that showed Roman Reigns' point of view on Seth Rollins' feud. Dean Ambrose makes his way to the ring. He'll be in action against Kevin Owens next. Commercial break. Ambrose versus Kevin Owens. They start off as Ambrose ducks, oh, ducks and oh, Owens punch and, punch and punches back at him. Owens reverses the whip, but Ambrose takes him down with a pair of clotheslines. Owens quickly roll, rolls out of the ring to recover. Ambrose follows him out and bounces off of the, of the commentary table. Owens then sends Ambrose over the table. <coughs> Owens steals Byron Saxon's headset. Talks trash to Dill Ambrose. Closes out him off the table. Ambrose uh, gets him in the ring and connects with a back suplex. Ambrose goes to the top rope, but jumps over Owens. Ambrose goes for another knee, but Owens takes him out with an insecurity. Owens follows up with a running ten time for a near fall. Owens kicks him in the back of the back and, and boots him in the head. Owens clubs him in the back of the head and talks trash. Owens then punches him down for a, with a and goes for a short arm clothesline. Ambrose ducks it and connects with a neck breaker. Ambrose comes back with a, with some right hands and hits the ropes, but Owens punches him. Ambrose goes for a rebound clothesline, but Owens super kicks him for a near fall. The crowd, which was dead throughout the whole show, continues to be during this match despite the action. Owens drops a leg and applies a chin lock. Ambrose fights up and punches out. Ambrose hits the ropes, but Owens catches him with a back elbow. Owens goes to the top rope, but Ambrose comes back with a superplex. Ambrose connects with a running forearm, but Owens counters out of the belt. Bulldog. Owens connects with a German suplex and goes for a cannonball, but Ambrose floors him with a clothesline. Ambrose pulls himself up and goes to the top rope, but Owens crushes him up there. Owens then connects with a cannonball for near fall. Owens goes for, goes for the pop-up power bomb. Ambrose counters into a hurricane and sends Owens out of the ring. Owens goes for, goes for a suicide dive, but Owens catches him and drives him into the barricade. Owens gets on the apron and crushes him with a big frog splash on the floor. Owens gets him in the ring and looks up at the money to make briefcase. Ambrose quickly comes back with dirty knees for the win. Ambrose then goes to the ring. He gets about 10 steps uh, from uh, ringside. Up the rampway. Turns back around, looks at the briefcase. And then climbs, uh, goes under the, uh, under the ring and pulls out a ladder. Ambrose sets it up. Begins to climb, but Owens tilts the ladder over, knocking him off. Ambrose hits the ropes hard. Owens sets up the ladder, but, it does, but he doesn't climb it. Owens points at the briefcase and screams, it belongs to him. Then we get to women's champion Charlotte. We'll be out next with Bro Dana Brooke. Commercial break. Another skit with Bob Backlund and Darren Young heirs. They, they still have yet to be in the same room together. Backlund has his car keys. And orders him to walk to the next town. Uh, by the way, it took, it's supposed to take eight hours. Uh, Charlotte makes her way to the ring with Dana Rook. Replay the show of her kicking Ric Flair out of the ring two weeks ago. Dana hands Charlotte a microphone. Charlotte says, Every great champion knows to admit when they're wrong. Since she's earned the respect of the WWE Universe, she wants to apologize for the last few weeks. She's been watching the footage with her, her and her father, and she's sorry. That needed to be said. They don't know what it's like to be on top. She has so much pressure on her. She's uh, sorry she didn't explain herself better. When she said R R Rick Flair was dead to her, she meant professionally. She still wants to celebrate Christmas with him, work out with him, and, his, and be his best friend. As a WWE Women's Champion, she doesn't want to share her spotlight. She can be, be be a champion without Ric Flair. She can't be Daddy's little girl without Daddy. Natalia's music hits. She comes out to the ring with Becky Lynch. Natalia asks Becky if she's buying any of this. Becky doesn't. Charlotte says, 
This has nothing to do with them. Out of all the people, she's expected Natalia to understand. She's surprised the E Network hasn't asked Natalia for a reality show on her family since they're a huge train wreck with her father and uncle. Natalia says her family isn't perfect, but the way she's she treated her father is disgusting. Becky says Charlotte uses people and will use Dana like the rest of them. Charlotte says that would never happen. Dana is her protege because she has a lot of wisdom to share. Natalia tells Dana to look at the track record. Charlotte ha is a master manipulator. Charlotte asks if they're done. Dana looks conflicted. It's like, well, she starts uh, to sway over to uh, the other side. Charlotte tries to get her to come, come back around. Charlotte tries to get Dana to leave the ring with her. But Dana moves over by Natalia and Becky. Dana then attacks Natalia. Charlotte puts Natalia in a chokehold while Dana hits Becky with a Michinuku driver. Then they pose in the ring above them. Then that segment. They advertise the NXT TakeOver. The end is coming on Wednesday. New Day will take on the club later tonight. Commercial break. Shining stars show on another Paradise, Puerto Rico, Vignet. Drinking a Look like a Hawaiian drink. Breeze Angle makes her way to the ring. A Vignette show. No Tyler Breeze shaving Van Fandango's back. Strange video. Uh, Tyler Breeze with Fandango versus R Truth with Gold Dust. R Truth split, split, splits under the clothesline and, and does a dance. R Truth punches away at him until Breeze needs him in the midsection. Uh, I think I took a bathroom break. Didn't see the finish to this one. Breeze hits the ropes and R Truth makes a. Uh, uh, Takes him out with a jumping heel kick. Goldust attacks Van Nagel at ringside when he was trying to distract Truth. Uh, Van Nagel rolls into the ring and R-Truth falls over him. The referee calls for the belt. Disqualification. Teddy Long's busy kids and it says it isn't going down like this. Long says this is why he shouldn't. He should be running the live SmackDown. Long has the only solution. This will restart as a tag team match. Security comes out and escorts him out. Long says it was worth a shot. There will not be a tag team match. Long, Long says, hashtag Teddy Long is running SmackDown Live and leaves with security. Brings the Fenego back up the rampway from Gold of Truth. Teddy Long walking backstage with Stephanie McMahon confronting him. She says the fun and games are over. SmackDown is going live on July 19th, but they won't have some old incompetent man running the show. Her father wants someone in charge that is young and has business acumen. That's not her brother. It's going to be her running SmackDown. Stephanie then kicks him out of the building. Uh, he doesn't actually exit the building. He's just going like to, to a some type of room or whatever. He pauses as they cut the segment. Cut, uh, commercial break. A tremendous uh, video airs the highlights of the, li of the life of Muhammad Ali, particularly the wrestling aspect of his career. Next week on Raw in New Orleans was advertised the Ambrose Asylum with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins as guests. The Shield will be in the ring together. Luke Gallo and Carl Anderson make their way to the ring, followed by AJ Styles. Another replay is shown of Styles and the club attacking John Cena last week. The club will face New Day next. Of course, commercial break. New Day makes their way to the ring. Xavier Woods in two weeks' time. They'll be in a fatal four-way match for the tag team titles. Big E says they're in a club. It's not the hair club for men because they're bald. Kobe Kingston wishes they were the Mickey Mouse Club so he could get out of grass for himself and his sons. Woods starts to sing, but uh, Big E cuts him off. They said, uh, well, they could be sued. Copyright infringement. Woods says they're in, they're in an actual club. Of WWE World Tag Team Champions, New Day Rocks. So the Max is up next. Uh, New Day and the club st uh, stand face to face. A brawl breaks out between the two teams. Biggie closes out to Carl Anderson out of the ring. Kofi, Kofi gets Luke Gallows out of the ring. Xavier takes AJ Styles down in the ring. Well, they have faced together in TNA. Consequence of Creed versus AJ Styles. Look it up. Avier, uh, uh, Anderson avoids Big E at ringside. Big E then hit, hits the ring steps with his knee jumping over. Kofi jumps off the steps. 
another uh, set of stats, but uh, Gallows punches him out, out of midair. In the ring, Woods climbs the uh, club styles down. Woods then takes Gallows out with an impressive somersault sent on Poncha. Woods gets in the ring and punches Styles out of the ring. Woods goes to the apron and kicks Styles away. Anderson then boots Woods down on the apron. Styles grabs Woods and gives him Styles tights on the floor. And he's uh, supposedly knocked out cold. And they take him, uh, some uh, medics, and uh, we'll have you take him to the back. The match was it. You had to start. Back for the commercial. We get Big E and Kofi Kingston starting a match by himself. Woods is injured and had to go back to the locker room. New Day will now compete in a three-on-two. Kofi and Anderson start the match. Kofi punches him in the corner and avalanches him. Anderson powers him to his corner. Kofi fights off and gets away. Kofi connects with a back suplex before tagging in Big E. Kingston then tags, uh, kicks Anderson in the chest before Big E hits a belly, belly to belly over over his suplex. Big E chokes him and splashes him on the apron. Styles charges at Big E at ringside, but, but he ducks it. Styles stumbles uh, with him with a pelé kick. Gallows uh, uh, floors Big E with a big boot. Anderson stops away at Big E, at Big e and he gets him back in the ring. Gallows tags in, and he clubs that way at him before Anderson tags back in. Anderson mid -boot, uh, boots him in the face and tags in Styles. Styles hits the corner clothesline and ta tags Gallows back in. Gallows hits the corner clothesline. For near fall, Gallows then apply, applies a chin lock before dropping it with some elbows. Big E rolls out of the way of one, so Anderson is, tag, is tagged in. Big E avoids an elbow drop from Anderson as well. Kofi uh, and Styles are both tagged in simultaneously. Kofi connects with a springboard chop and knocks Gallows off the apron. Kofi chops uh, Styles down and connects with a drop kick before hit, uh, hitting a loopy clothesline. Close Kicks and catches him, catch him with a boom drop before getting, giving Gall, Gall, Gallows a DDT. Styles grabs Kingston and sends him to the corner. Styles avoids a crossbody and goes for the Styles clash, but Kingston counters him, counters into the SOS. But Anderson breaks up the pinfall. Big E runs in and gives him the belly to booty, belly to booty suplex. Gallows big boots him. Kofi super kicks him out of the ring. Styles and floors kicks him with a phenomenal forearm for the win. <coughs> the club continues to attack the New Day until John Cena runs out for the save. Cena takes out Anderson and Gallows with punches and gets in the ring. But Styles quickly leaves the ring. Cena attacks Gallows and Anderson as they get on the apron. Styles then attacks Cena with a forearm. Styles punches away at Cena before getting up and laughing. Styles stomps away, stomps him before Kofi take, takes him out with a springboard drop kick. Anderson runs in and Big E connects him. With a big ending, Gallows comes in, and Cena catches him with an attitude adjustment. The club retreats as Cena stands tall in, with the New Day to end uh, the TV part of, of Raw. Well, what happened after Raw went off the air? John Cena and Roman Reigns defeated Seth Rollins and, and Sheamus. Seth Rollins wrestled his first match. Since uh, tearing his ACL and MCL last November during a match with Kane, after Monday's, Monday Night's Raw went off the air, Rollins teamed with Sheamus to face John Cena and Roman Reigns. Two reports of this one. Uh, Rollins was wearing a big knee brace in the match. The match started with uh, Sheamus and Cena. However, Sheamus quickly tagged out Ro to Rollins, who quickly tagged back out. Match ended with Ro Roman Reigns hitting Rollins with a Superman punch and Cena then nailing Rollins with an attitude adjustment. Reigns and hits Spear on Sheamus for the pinfall. And that ends my video for this week's Raw. Thanks again. Peace out. See you in a And if you don't know, just comment, brothers and sisters.